On today's Lockdown Angels, we're trying to figure out who that man on the mound was for the Angels yesterday. I think it was uh, Satrick Pandaval, maybe? He looked like Patrick Sandoval, but was completely different and so much better. We're going to talk about that game, plus we're previewing the series against the Red Sox, and we're finishing our recap of Sam Blum's interview with GM Perry Manassian. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And welcome to all the new Everydayers that are with us now. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Happy Thursday to you, and thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the First Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, uh, it's our third season here at Lockdown Angels. We're off to a good start as the hosts this season because we're having ourselves a good time. The Angels have won four in a row, including a sweep of the <laughs> Miami Marlins. Can you can you hit me with a two sweet uh, across the camera there? <laughs> yes. There we go. There we go. I love that. Hey, uh, we're here five days a week. The only Angels podcast that's covering this team Monday through Friday. In fact, it's the number one Angels podcast out there. You love to hear it. On today's show, continuing our look at Sam Blum's interview with GMPM, we're going to get into more questions that he had for Perry Manassi. And plus, we're going to preview the series, the home opening series, Mike. It starts on Friday against the Red Sox, weather permitting. It's looking a little dicey yeah. <laughs> on yeah. Friday. So uh, I'm hoping that everybody who's going to the home opener can actually sit and watch the game and not get rained out. But Mike, how about Patrick Sandoval on the mound yesterday against the Marlins? Let's talk about it. Yeah, coming into this game, Sandoval was 0-1 with a 1.80 ERA, 10 innings pitch, two earned, and eight strikeouts against the Marlins. His last start was last May. In 2023, May 28th, he tossed six innings and allowed two runs on eight hits and two walks and two strikeouts. So how would he do yesterday? He started the game off with a strikeout of a rise, and that's hard to do. And yeah. Sandy did it twice in this game, John, right, right. to strike that guy out. He has such a great approach at the plate. And have, having Sandoval strike him out twice was was really impressive, in my opinion. Yeah, the overall performance from Sandoval was impressive. Mike, he had 17 swings and misses, 29 called strikes plus whiffs on his pitches. <laughs> so they were swinging at a lot of those and missing those. Uh, a 55% whiff rate on his changeup, which is what you want that changeup to be because historically the whiff rate on his changeup is in the 50s and above. So the fact that he was able to execute that changeup effectively yesterday was huge and I think made all the difference, especially the fact that he could locate his fastball yesterday as well. Yeah, so following the first inning, really good first inning, the second inning was really good as well. And in fact, the first two innings, John, six up, six down, 20 pitches with four strikeouts. Sandoval needed 16 pitches to record his first out just six days ago. He had a completely <laughs> different mound presence yesterday. Did run into some trouble in the bottom of the third. Josh Bell got a single and Garcia scored. Then Jake Berger singled and Arise scored. But then Sandoval got out of it, John. He didn't lose his head. Yeah. The defense, the defense stayed true behind him. Like they didn't lose their head either. And so Sandoval finished five and two thirds. Four hits, two runs, two walks, seven K, seven Ks, 93 pitches. Listen to this. 65 strikes, 70%. 17 of 23 first pitch strikes, 74%. John, if they throw strike one, and if they're trying to get to 0-2, these pitchers are so successful. And yeah. that's the Barry Enright strategy. And they're finally adopting that in the regular season. We saw it a lot in spring, but they're finally adopting it in the regular season. And that's exciting to see, especially for someone like Sandoval, who we've been on, I've been on, right? And to see him perform well yesterday and to do what we know he can do was like salve for the soul, was it? <laughs> was it not? <laughs> well, it's nice to know that Barry Enright brought this approach to the team. And that's something that we've always believed that he was going to do well. He said it right from the beginning. In fact, he sat down with Sam Blum shortly after his hiring and said, 
hey, these guys are are wasting a lot of time out there. They're not getting to strike one. They're not throwing strikes, and we got to cut that out. And that's why these outings, you know, it's four innings pitch, but 100 pitches, and that's not yeah. sustainable at all. And the the weird thing is, is that Sandoval, in theory, should be able to do that. And, right. can, and Canning, in theory, should be able to do that. Right. But they just had such a hard time locating their fastball and getting those first pitch strikes uh, the first time through the rotation. So what do you say to somebody who's like, okay, it's the Marlins. And so calm down and how the angels really couldn't race to strike one and strike two against the Orioles. Do you think that there was some intimidation? Do you think that there was some opening day jitters? What do you think that it is? And and should we just completely be like, well, it's the Marlins. And so it doesn't matter. Where do you land there, John? Give us some wisdom. It's mechanics. It's, it's nothing to do with the Orioles or the Marlins, it's you just weren't able to throw a strike in the zone. And I don't know about you, Mike, but like, and this is silly. This is a silly example, right? I, I remember filling in at catcher during our softball playing days, right? Mm-hmm. And I I actually oh, like to be back there. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one game in particular where all I had to do was throw the ball back to our pitcher, you know, yeah. after he threw it. And one of those days it was just like, I have no, I got nothing in this arm. What am I doing? You, you know, I, <laughs> honestly. And I was like, what's, what's wrong with me today? Yeah. And, and so trust me, I understand stupid park softball is nothing compared right. to baseball. <laughs> yes. But what I'm trying to get at is I just didn't have what I was, what I needed to do that sure. day. Sure. And, and my body just wasn't cooperating at all. And so I feel like it's a mechanics issue with these guys, something that, mm the starting pitchers and Barry Enright can figure out and look yeah. at video and go, yeah. Hey dude, you're, you're flying open. And that's why you're not putting the fastball where you want it to go. So it certainly seemed to make a big difference against the Marlins. And that, yesterday. and that was what happened with Patrick Sandoval's first start, right? Like yeah. he was flying open and a lot yes. of people noticed that. I think your problem was, is, was the Del Taco burrito before you went out onto the probably. Field. No, that was always <laughs> after the game. That was always that's after right. It was game. after the game. You're right. Hey, You're listen, right. <laughs> uh, Cisnero got the final out in the sixth inning, which is great. And then Zuniga went out, got, went three innings, struck out one. He got his first save, Mike. And yep. a lot of people were like, how does that work? Well, just pretend, just pretend this is the best <laughs> way I can explain it. That, each of the innings that Zuniga uh, pitched was a four to one game in the ninth inning. Is yeah. The best way I can put it because of the number of batters that were remaining in the game against the angels, the number of outs that the Marlins had left to come back and score, or at least tie the game. So the reason why Zuniga got the save was that he went those three innings and retired all three guys. He, yeah. That, that was awesome. Yeah. To see Mike, the, the hitters got this one. Started early, top of the first. I love seeing Renhifo Renhifo lead off in this <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah, and play third base. He led off with a double. Ward had an RBI single that scored Renhifo. Ward has driven in at least one run in each of his last five games, which is tied for the longest RBI streak of his career. He had a five-game RBI streak from September nineteenth to the twenty-third in twenty twenty-two. Anytime you can reference Taylor Ward from twenty twenty-two outside of running into the wall yeah. and recovering from that. That's a good thing. Trout Absolutely. was on, went first to third Drury grounded into a fielder's choice. It scored trout. It made it two nothing angels. Mike, my first thought there was nickel and dime yep. the angels nickeled and dimed. And that's what they had to do. And then right. they kind of poured it on a little bit later. Why don't you talk about the second and the way they scored later on in the game. Yeah. And the top of the second Hicks singled and then Ward doubled and then Drury hit one to third. It went under the glove of the third baseman. It scored two, made it four, nothing. Then top of five, Logan O'Hoppy, who is just hitting everything right now. He singles on a ground ball to the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. Drury scored Miguel Sano, who walked a couple of times in this game might be finding it. Right. Yeah, That's exciting. And had uh, uh, two hits in this one. And then even a ground out that was like 115 miles an hour off the bat for yeah. Miguel Sano. Good yeah. grief. Then Joe Adele hits a sacrifice fly to right and Sano scores made it six to two at that point. Did you see Joe Adele celebrate that sacrifice fly behind first base? I don't think he, I noticed it. He, so he's walking down the line and he's watching Sano score and then he claps and fist pumps. <laughs> and, and it was <laughs> just, that. it was one of those moments where you're like, this is why I like having this guy around and why I want him in the game more often because he brings so much energy and it's a youthful energy. It's not like mm-hmm. a, an arrogance about him. It's just no. like, yay, I did good and we're doing good, right? I you love wanna, that. You want to see some arrogance 
And before this series started, I, I had a fan in Jazz Chisholm, but, or I should say Jazz Chisholm had a fan in me, but I don't know. Something about, <laughs> something about the way he carried himself. And I'm sure mm. they're upset and they're struggling and they're, yeah. you know, they haven't won a game yet. Something about the way Jazz carried himself. I went, uh, I don't nah. know if I like that very much. <laughs> the vibe just feels off. And they were talking about that on the radio side. Everything kind of feels off for the Marlins, but not for the Angels, man. Zach Neto at the top of the seventh, got an RBI double. Then Sean O'El had a sacrifice fly. Taylor Ward in the top of the eighth hits his third home run. Feels like uh, 2022 Taylor Ward is back, right? That's right. He's feeling 22, baby. I love <laughs> Whenever a Taylor's feeling 22, that's a good thing. We'll take it. And then Sean O'Well wasn't supposed to be in this game, but Renjifo left because he felt lightheaded. And Sean O'Well hadn't reached base, didn't have all the at-bats that he could have had. And then top of the nine, he, he gets hit in the elbow. And it's yeah. right first, on the first pad. Pitch. And so yeah. it extended his on-base streak. To start this to start his career, 35 games, which was great. Johnny, the Angels have outscored their opponents by 16 runs in the last four games after being outscored by 17 in the first two. Their run differential right now, they are negative one <laughs> because they're finally catching up to those numbers yeah. that the Orioles put up on them. So great series, nice series sweep. The Angels did what they're supposed to do against teams that are struggling. The Angels in 2023 didn't do this, John. They mm. didn't win against teams that they were supposed to just crush. And so the great news is they did exactly what they were supposed to do in this series. And to get a sweep after that Baltimore series is probably really life-giving for these players. And more importantly, they walk out of this road trip four and two, and they're sitting in first place in the AL West. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just goes to show that if you don't blow up the first inning and surrender yeah. four runs or five yeah. runs or what have you, the angels have the ability to come back. Right. And I think the hitters have the ability to come back. Now, look, I totally understand that, you know, we're not facing Corbin Burns with the Marlins, but right. Jesus Lazardo is a tough customer and the angels were able to get to him two days ago and AJ puck, you know, struggled in his first start. The angels went out there and did exactly what we said that they were supposed to do. Don't help him out. Get after him because he had a blow up in his first start and the second start. I had a lot of confidence in the fact that they could go out and do it again, but really it just comes down to don't lose the game in the first inning Yeah, and don't put yourselves behind in the first inning. In fact, right. having that two nothing lead for Patrick Sandoval to come out there, I think that made a big difference as well, Mike. Yeah, I uh, agree. We appreciate you making Locked On Angels your first listen every single day. The Angels are playing the Red Sox on Friday, 638 Pacific time. It's the big home opener. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Coming up on Locked On Angels, we're previewing the series against the Red Sox, seeing how the matchups might go down this weekend. We're going to get into all of that coming right up. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is now the authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. And they're obsessed with finding ways to save you money on getting tickets with your tickets. So Game Time has all of these great deals. They have last minute deals on tickets where you can save up to 60% for all sorts of sports and not just sports, but concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. And then they have exclusive in-app flash deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. And then you can save even more on zone deals when you choose a section and let Game Time choose your seats. Game Time has all in pricing. This feature shows the total right up front, so there's no surprises at checkout. Plus, you also get a panoramic view of your seats in the app so you know what to expect before you buy the tickets. Then, of course, the low price guarantee. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find seats in the same section and same row for less. Plus, with every purchase, you receive Game Time ticket coverage your purchase is covered with the most flexible flexible customer policy uh customer service policy in the ticketing industry so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time and for a limited time all users get twenty dollars off any mlb purchase of 150 dollars or more in the game time app with this code first pitch that's first pitch all one word all caps First pitch, $20 off. So download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. This is the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. Every day, it's time to make the switch from your regular sports viewing and check out Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24 7 streaming channel. 
all sports all day long. It's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories from across every league. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. The Angels are back at it on Friday, 6.38 Pacific time at the Big A for the home opener. Don't miss out. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the YesXM app. Just search Angels. The, let's talk about the uh, series against the Red Sox, preview kind of the upcoming matchups, John. And let's talk about the most important thing that's happening in this series. And that's Friday night. Jared Weaver throwing out the first Heck pitch. yeah. Ding. <laughs> Love it. I saw Love that he it. said, I'll see you Friday. And you went, what's this about? Excuse right? me? <laughs> so Weave's going to throw out the first pitch, which is really exciting. So I, not, I, It's not what I thought it would be, you know, yeah. signing for a day and then retiring as an angel. That's, uh, I'm still waiting for that day. Yes. I have been watching the video of him uh, against the Seattle Mariners where who's at, who's at the plate. And he kept calling timeout Kyle Seager. And, yes. Kyle Seager. And, and so Seager's like, I am, I'm going, I'm going. And then we've just throws one right in his back. Yeah. I miss Jared Weaver. All right. So <laughs> uh, let's talk about game one for a second, John. Uh, the uh, angels are playing the Red Sox. So it's Griffin canning. He's back out looking to bounce back after his last start against cutter Crawford, who by the way, was the last pitcher to strike Luis Arise out twice in a game. So ah. Cutter Crawford is going to be the guy that we're facing. Crawford in his first start this year, John, went six and he struck out seven hmm. and had a great start. Now, it was against the A's, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that impressive, but still impressive, right? And so Angels hitters don't have too many at-bats against Crawford. Hicks has the most, six at-bats with a home run. Moniak has one at-bat and he homered. In hey. that, that so might see Moniac on Friday night, perhaps even see Hicks. They might have to figure out who's DHing and and where where the players are going to go. But I think it would be wise to have Moniac and Hicks in this lineup because they have the most success. Although it's small sample size against Cutter Crawford. Hey, you got to go with what history tells you. And if somebody identifies uh, this pitcher well and can get a home run off of them, then I say put him in the lineup. And there's there's space for both of them with the DH and right field being open uh, for Moniac and Aaron Hicks. Game two is going to be Garrett Whitlock versus your boy, Reed Detmers. Whitlock's yep. first start, he went five innings pitch with eight Ks. The Angels haven't had too much success against Whitlock in the past, except for Mr. Mike Trout. He's got yeah. seven ABs, one homer, and two RBIs. Mike, how do you think Reed Detmers is going to do this second time around? More of the same? Is that what you're hoping for? <laughs> I, I, well, obviously I'm hoping for that. I think that it really boils down to being able to do what he did in his previous start. And mm -hmm. that is race to two strikes. And it seems like Ray Detmers has a confidence about him that the other starting staff really hasn't had at least to start the season. Reed's confident in the fact that he's going to do what Barry and Wright's teaching him. And again, I, and I've mentioned this a few times in the pod, but Enright identified in Reed Detmer some things early in the off season and they talked. And so I think Enright really sees Reed as the, uh, the, the foe uh, uh, ace of the staff, even mm. though, you know, Sandoval was the opening day guy. And I think sure. that they're, they're probably working together. I would assume they're working together to really continue to help him to become a whole lot better. And Reed said, I want to win 20 games this year. So yeah, go for it, buddy. Right. Absolutely. And, and he certainly is the one that, and right identified right out of the gate in terms of like, Hey, that's somebody I can't wait to work with yeah. in, in Reed Detmer. So uh, game three is going to be Tanner Houck versus Chase Silseth. Houck in his first start went six struck out 10. Mike. Oh, so, so th there was, there was what? Six innings, five innings and six innings. So their starters are, are going deeper than the angel starters into games. That's, yeah, that's seven, a interesting stat. Seven K's from Crawford, eight from Whitlock and 10 from Houck. So, Sounds like these guys need to be wary of the strikeout. Miguel Sano actually in his career has hit 667 Woo! against Tanner Houck. So you might see him in the lineup. <laughs> yeah. Mike, if we had to uh, put on our Mark Gubaza hat and provide our keys to the game, but let's do keys to the weekend. Yeah. Where would you begin with your keys to the weekend? Well, I'm going to start uh, uh, Money for Nothing by Pink Floyd. And uh, I'm going <laughs> to talk about nickel and diming. And that's what the Angels need to do. We saw them do it against the Marlins, and we saw them do that against the Orioles in that last game. And what I mean by that, what we mean by that, is that they're going to score when they have the opportunity to score. Sacrifice fly. They're moving the runner over. A ground ball 
to first base, but it scores the runner from third. Those are the types of things that the Halos just didn't do well last year, did well in spring and, and did well in this last series against the Marlins. So they need to nickel and dime. It's also the, also those add on runs, John, those extra runs are so needed and necessary late yeah. in the game. And so when, when they can move that runner to, to third and get him in, in the seventh and eighth inning, just if it's one run, that's such a relief for this bullpen because mm-hmm. then you have somebody unintended. Like, Yes, then you have somebody like Carlos Estevez coming in, and if he does give up a few base runners, there isn't the threat of like, oh, I, I can't make another mistake, right? It gives him a little bit of flexibility, and I think the Angels just need to continue to be aggressive. They need yeah. to steal bags, and that's why I think Joe Adele should be in this lineup at least twice this mm. weekend because I want to see some stolen bases, and Joe just has an energy and an excitement, as I mentioned before, that I want to see on the field, and he's got a good swing. His swing looks a little bit more compacted, and on a sacrifice fly yesterday he made good contact and it was almost like he was in he was intentional in trying to get the sack fly instead of trying to crush the ball and i i really feel like joe joe is really maturing at the plate and so i think his aggressiveness and his energy need to be in this lineup perhaps more often than not this weekend what about you i think the angels obviously you can't blow up in the first inning but you have to be aware of something the the red sox are rolling into Anaheim because they've had a lot of success to start out this season. In fact, one person I'd be wary of, and the reason why I know this is because I drafted him, is Jaron Duran. Mm. That guy had three stolen bases in one game against the A's because he took advantage of their mistakes. And I think that the Angels have to be really buttoned up this weekend. Otherwise, the Red Sox, who, again are rolling and hot and excited to, you know, be on the, on the win streak that they're on, they're going to take advantage of mistakes. So the angels can't leave any room for error. And going back to Jaron Duran again, he had a, like a four for four day the other day. Wow. So they're hitting well, he's running well. And so I think the angels really have to go out there with the mindset of, we got to shut these guys down. We can't let them take advantage of our mistakes. And on the other side of that, they have to take advantage of, any room that the Red Sox will give them. Otherwise, I think that they have to be careful that they don't get trounced (laughs) when when the opportunity comes. So again, stay buttoned up. Don't give away the game in the first inning and try to shut down the red hot Red Sox and what they're doing right now. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy platform in North America, and they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's tournament season, and there's a fight for home court in the NBA playoffs. Now is the right time to make some of your basketball hoop knowledge turn into some sweet cash and you can get on all of the excitement with prize picks and again turn that hoops knowledge into serious cash you can win up to a hundred times your money hundred times your money john with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars like a magician with the nba nhl college basketball entries today and instead of battling thousands of other players like pros and sharks you just play against the numbers and here's how you pick between two and six players and decide if that player is going to produce more than or less than the projected stat. And if you get it right, you can watch your winnings roll in. So download the prize pick app today and enter our promo code locked on MLB for a first deposit match of a hundred dollars. Again, that's locked on MLP MLB with uh, all one word, all lowercase, and you can get a first deposit match of a hundred dollars. Join prize picks today, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Mike, all week long, we've been talking about the article that Sam Blum wrote early, uh, actually at the end of spring training, where he sat down with Perry Manassian and he asked him some really important questions. And you and I have been going through those questions and kind of given our feedback as Angel fans. So why don't we get into what Sam had in this last segment that we're going to be doing about this interview. Let me read the question and Perry's response here. So he said, when you look at the foundation for the future, is it Zach Neto, Logan O'Hoppy, and Perry said, obviously, they're both talented. Nolan Shonowell is talented. Silseth, Detmers, they're all talented. They're a group of young players here that I believe can take another step. They're hungry, and they're workers. And some of our core players, our young core, we brought to camp. We wanted them to be around our young core. Give them opportunities to teach while they are learning, like guys like Neto did with guys like Nelson Rada and Kyron Paris. That's what we want. Teaching and learning happening at the same time. So a few points here. Foundation 
isn't just play on the field, but leadership in the clubhouse. And I think you see that with the fact that Zach Neto, who, by the way, hasn't been in the organization as long as somebody like Kyron Paris. However, right, right. he is the major league starting shortstop, but he's taking guys like Nelson Rada and Kyron Paris under his wing. What does that say about Zach Neto? What do you think about that? I think I think Neto has just a natural leadership quality. I mm-hmm. think a, a shortstop always seems to be a guy that you want to turn to and ask questions of. And I don't know if it's because of the Jeters and the the players like that in the past. The, you know the um, um, Cal Ripkins, those types of players, right? Yeah. Like like those types of players are ones that you look to. And Neto just seems to be a guy who doesn't get too down. He just keeps playing through all of the chaos and then pulls Mm -hmm. out a great defensive play. Like he did a couple of nights ago or got a couple of hits like he did in yesterday's game. And so I, I really like his leadership qualities who I also really like is Logan Ohapi. He seems to be somebody that has been kind of a rallier for this team. I mean, Sean Owell was looking up in the stands and he caught a ball and then they were walking into the dugout and Ohapi just kind of grabbed him and hugged him as they were walking in. So you can see that, that Ohapi has uh, a great connection with these guys. And, and I love to see these young guys teach the younger guys and help them to be better as well. One of my favorite things going on on Reddit right now is, uh, do the angels have the power of friendship on their side? So <laughs> we are, we're the power of friendship team this season. I love our that. powers united. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so pair, uh, so Sam continued, uh, in terms of the, the interview, he said, do you think there's a different culture with this team mm. this year? And Perry said, it's different. You have different leadership. It's going to be different. The culture last year, I didn't have an issue with. It was a good, <laughs> can't even read that out loud. It was a good <laughs> culture last year. Wait till Phil Nevin, time. Phil Nevin did a pause. <laughs> it wasn't a culture issue. In my opinion. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, it's different. You have a change in leadership. It's going to be different. What's emphasized, the style of play, what's important to this manager and staff is going to be a little different than the previous manager. Ooh, what is that pause there, Mike, mm. in terms of mm. you know what Perry was about to say and what he talked himself out of saying from Phil Nevin? And I think that speaks to something bigger. This year feels way different yeah. than last year. And I think yeah. Wash has an, uh, an influence that's much more impactful than Phil Nevin. and. Yeah. I think naturally, I mean, sure. Uh, Nevin, of course, has been around the game a long time, but Ron Washington has been a manager before and he's helped out a lot of star players. In fact, you think about like the Matt Olsons of the world or mm-hmm. the uh, Marcus Semyons. Mike, I saw uh, a tweet the other day from one of the Dodgers beat writers of Freddie Freeman getting ready before the game. And you know what he was doing? He was doing that little <laughs> bounce pass yep. Yep. Uh, outside, inside, you know, other side yep. uh, catching routine that Wash does, and it was Dino Evil throwing mm. to to Freddie Freeman. So he's had a lasting impact. What do you think that says about the difference between this year and last year? Yeah, you look at Phil Nevin, and he's a, he's an old-school baseball guy, kind of got a bit of a hothead, even as a player. And then you look at Ron Wash, who's an old-school baseball guy, but there is a vast difference between the two. And I think the vast difference, honestly, John, is experience, evaluated mm. experience. And Phil Nevin wanted to scare these guys into playing better. Get Mm. your head out of your, right? He says that in the dugout last year. Yeah. But Wash calls a team meeting. Wash walks out to the mound and says, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Don't do that, right? Throw the ball over the plate, make him earn it. And that's just experience. And I think that that's the big difference between a Phil Nevin and a Ron Washington. Johnny, I think that's the big difference between a Brad Osmus and a Ron Washington. Brad looked lost as the, yeah. as the angels manager. And you could tell that their experience was not helpful at the tail end of last season. And when, uh, when Osmus was coaching in 2019, you could tell that these guys didn't know what to do when they were tail spinning. And yeah. that's why, that's why we found ourselves in a bit of a, a, a whirlpool last year, because Nevin Nevin's anger is not going to get you out of this. Yeah. It's mechanics. It's focus. It's confidence, and Nevin wasn't able to pull that out. It seems like Wash has found the key to be able to do that with these Angels players so far. To be fair, doesn't Osmond always kind of have a look on his face where he looks <laughs> lost? Like he's just kind of like even even on the show when he's on MLB the show when they show him the dugout when he's the manager. He that even that character is like he looks like a wee character. Huh? <laughs> a wee, a, a me, yeah, a me, yes. 
Final question here, Mikey. Uh, Sam Blum asked Perry Manassian, you have one year left on your contract. Is it tough to navigate that? And Perry said, I'm not worried about that. Whether I have a one-day contract or a 30-year contract, it's what I'm uh, It's what I'm doing that makes this place better. There's a lot of people that work here. There's a fan base that's relying on me to make this place better. I don't take that lightly. I have tunnel vision when it comes to that stuff. So that has zero bearing on anything. If Perry isn't re-signed, does that set this organization back what do you say did perry say i'm not too worried about it <laughs> all right too worried about it yeah i i honestly john i think it would be it'd be dumb to not hmm. re-sign perry manassian at least for another year yeah or two yeah. i think he needs to have a couple of years with wash and i think that he's done a a fairly good job of getting the right young players in this organization under the constraints of Artie Moreno. Mm -hmm. And I know that not all of it's been successful, but we really don't have much to judge it on at this point because yeah. he's just now getting his players <laughs> and his manager on this team and on this field. Do you want exciting young players who may or may not succeed at the major league level? Or do you want zero young players right. who may or may not succeed at the major league level. That's the way I look at it, Mike, when it comes to Perry Manassian and the job he's been able to do, he's at least brought something to the table rather than the last two GMs who kind of gave all of that away. They traded yeah. a lot of that away and it's a real yeah. shame, but whether Perry stays or goes, at least you have some young guys here that you can kind of build upon for the future. But I think they need to extend him and let him see this through because, you know, we just got word that, the renovations at spring training are happening mm -hmm. and they are going to have their pitching lab and hitting lab it's supposed to be done by 2025. So they actually began doing that. And I think that's a very good thing. So as long as Perry Manassian can have influence over the places he has allowed, or he's allowed to have influence, I think that's going to be a very good thing for this team. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Remember, the Angels play the Red Sox on Friday, 6.38 Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. You're going to want to do that because tomorrow, Mike, what do we have on deck for our show? It's Fan Mail Friday. We would love to hear from you, and so you can tweet at us, you can get in our DMs, you can comment below on YouTube, you can even call us on our voicemail line, leave a 30-second voicemail, 714-409-6396. You can tell us about how you felt on opening weekend versus how you feel right now. Yes. And it's probably a whole lot better. And so I'd love to get your thoughts on Patrick Sandoval's improvement. And what do you think locked on every day are, are we going to get really excited about the angels beating the Marlins or do we need to temper expectations because it is the Marlins. Give us your thoughts there. Comment below. We would love to hear from you tomorrow on locked on angels fan mail Friday. Looking forward to that. We hope you'll come and join us and get those questions in for Fan Mail Friday ASAP. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here on Friday. This is the uh, portion of the show where we banter. Yeah. And until the, the timer runs out. Run out.